Hi quilting friends! It's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber, and today we're playing with the Baby Lock Sashiko machine. Now I've had this machine six months now, a little over, and I have been playing with it. I have quilted several quilts with it, and I've just been having a blast. Now I did an unboxing video earlier, and I'll link to that down in the description box. But today I'm going to show you how the Sashiko machine works, what it does, and what's so fun about this machine. So you ready? Let's get started. The first thing you want to know about the Sashiko machine is that it has a top spindle, but it only uses a bobbin thread. So I have a little compartment here on the side that I can pull out and that has my extra bobbins in it. It uses a class 15 bobbin, which luckily enough is the exact same bobbin that my Aria and my Jubilant, both baby lock machines, also use. So I can just swap my bobbins from one machine to another without any problems. Because it only uses a bobbin thread, this top spindle here is really only for winding your bobbins. So I'm going to put my thread on this top spindle. putting it through the guide back here and clicking it into this guide at the top and then through the eye and then giving it a couple good windings before latching it into place. I need the machine on to wind my bobbin. And then I'm going to go ahead and wind it. Now generally when you wind a bobbin, you don't want to wind it at the highest speed the machine can go, which I know we all want to just put the pedal to the metal and get that bobbin wound. But we want to have a nice even tension and not the tension that all that speed is going to give it. So you want to be a little patient with your bobbin while she winds. You don't have to step on the pedal the whole time. Once you've started the bobbin winding, you can actually take your foot off the pedal and it'll wind automatically. There we go. So I'm going to disengage this bobbin, pull it off, and cut my thread. And I can just leave my spool of thread up here for winding another bobbin later, or I can just go ahead and wind some more bobbins now. Once you have your bobbin wound, it's all a matter of just inserting this bobbin, and it is very simple. We're going to press the button. That's going to turn that bobbin indicator light green. Once my bobbin indicator lights green, I'm good to go and open up the bobbin, the bottom bobbin area. I can pull this out with a little handle just like I would on any other front loading machine, although this one is a side loading machine. And I can take out my previous color of bobbin. This thread wanted to stay behind, I'll go ahead and remove that too. If you ever forget how to put the bobbin in, there's a little cheat sheet right inside but we're putting the bobbin in with the little arms up and bringing the thread up. Now we're taking our thread tail and I'm going to clip it and put the thread through. There we go. I've just put the thread through both little eyes. Now I'm going to flip this with those little arms, those little pegs facing down. I'm going to grab on my little handle here and with my little mohawk up, I'm going to insert it in the machine. I want to carefully kind of bring my mohawk in from the side so I don't mash it up in there. And then I'm going to hold on to these, this thread. I'm going to give the side wheel one turn. There we go. That brought up this thread. I'm going to lift up my presser foot. Just use my purple thing to grab that thread. Put the presser foot back down. And I'm going to go around again until I see that this little arm here has grabbed my thread, which means I'm ready to wave goodbye and close that up. Now I can take this thread and cut it right here. 
and that gives me some tension right here and holds onto that thread. This is important. We're going to cut the thread and make sure that it's tucked in after every set of stitches. This tension is important for creating the stitches on the Sashiko machine. Now we're threaded and we're ready to quilt. So I have this quilt that I basted some time ago and it really needs to be quilted. I thought I'd go ahead and quilt it on the Sashiko machine and this variegated thread is the perfect thread to quilt up this quilt. Before we start quilting, there are two decisions that we have to make and those are on the length and the spacing between our stitches. And those are right here. They're these two guides. And for this quilt, I want to have fairly long stitches and I want them to be evenly spaced so I can line these two up. So it's gonna be long stitches with a space that's the same. So a stitch of four and a space of four. You can do whatever combination you want. You can have long stitches with short spaces. You can have long spaces with short stitches. You can have long stitch spaces and long stitches, short spaces and short stitches. There's so many different ways that you can stitch up with this machine to get different looks and I'll show you some of those in a little bit. So we're quilting this quilt. I have it already spray basted and ready to go and I've already started stitching on it. So I'm going to show you what I'm working on and show you how easy it is to quilt this. So I'm stitching just inside on this solid colored fabric. Super simple. I'll go ahead and spin this around to work on a new section. And it's really, really simple. I just put my presser foot down. I want this about a quarter inch away from the solid fabric. So I'm just lining up the side of the presser foot. And there we go. Now the important thing to remember is that each stitch is a stitch and a space. So I want to line up my presser foot with that last stitch so that I don't get big gaps between my stitching. So I'll do that again. I'm lifting it up. I'm pivoting. Unlike a regular straight stitch machine, I don't have my needle down, so I need to kind of manage this myself. And then I keep going. Lift, pivot, line up, and I'm using that center hole there where the needle goes down in the presser foot. There we, yep, there we go. And then I just keep stitching. For this design, when I get to a point down here, I'm lifting it up and just moving it to my next block. That way I can do like a serpentine stitching pattern and go back and forth through all of the blocks, just back and forth through all the blocks. And that way I don't have to go all the way around one block and finish my threads and then go around in the next block and finish my threads. So I'm gonna continue this all the way around. When you get to the end, it's super simple. Just lift up your presser foot, take any extra and bring it to the back. And then you're going to put that tension back on the thread and cut it off right here. And on the back of your quilt, it's just gonna look like regular stitching. In this case, the stitching's a little big because I'm going with bigger stitches and bigger spaces, but it just looks like regular stitching on the back of the quilt and those spots where I pulled the thread over, it's just a longer stitch. And when I come back across the other side, it's gonna be a longer stitch right here and it's gonna look really neat with these little X's on the back. Now I've made a bunch of projects on the Sashiko machine and so I thought I would show you some of the stitching on those. This one was super fun and I used a really bright pink thread to really highlight those stitches on the front and then on the back it just looks like regular stitching regular straight line stitching but that front 
Look at those fun big stitches, right? Here, for this fun winter themed quilt, I did big diagonal stitches. I had lots of fun quilting this quilt and you can see all that stitching all throughout. So for this one, I picked a path that went through the center and then down a side and then through the center and then down a side. It's so much fun to look at a quilt and figure out your path across the quilt to get all the stitching that you want and to make it look just so. And then I have this quilt and this quilt, you can barely see those tiny little stitches that I did, tiny stitches and tiny spaces for a really delicate quilting look. So the biggest question that I get asked is why do I need a machine that really only does one thing? Well, the answer is I have one machine that I use for piecing and I have a second machine that I also use for piecing. That's my backup machine and it's my travel machine. So I don't need another machine that does straight stitches and zigzag stitches because I already have one machine and a backup that do those things for me. So if I'm looking at another machine, I want a machine that does something completely different. Something that my Aria and my Jubilant don't already do for me. And that was the Sashiko machine. The Sashiko, Sashiko machine, it quilts my quilts up so quickly. I love free motion quilting and you've probably seen my free motion quilting videos here on this YouTube channel. And I love doing the free motion quilting, but it takes a lot of time. And with the Sashiko machine, I got through four quilts in two days. And that included making the backings for the quilts and basting them. It was so quick to quilt up quilts on the Sashiko machine and they look so good. It does a really fun stitch and it just, it looks like handwork without the time of handwork. There's no way I could have quilted four quilts in two days if I'd actually done it by hand. And I could have done it on my regular machine with a walking foot and had a straight stitch, but I don't think it would have looked nearly as fun as these Sashiko stitches do. So there you go, all the details on the Baby Lock Sashiko machine. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. I'll look for those. And if you have questions, I'll try to get you answers as quick as I can. If you go to the description box, I've linked to the Sashiko machine on the Baby Lock website so you can get more details on it. If you want to play with the Sashiko machine, you can go to the Baby Lock website that link is also in the description box and up in the top you'll do the dealer search put in your zip code and find the dealer nearest you call them up and ask them if they have a sashiko machine on the floor that you can come and stitch on and look at see how it works and get the hands-on feel for this machine there's also lots more videos here on youtube i've linked to a couple that should help you out as well so you can get some other views on how the Sashiko machine works and if it's gonna be a good sewing buddy for you to have in your sewing room. Speaking of buddies, friends, I wanna thank you for coming and hanging out with me in my sewing room today. I've had so much fun showing you around the Baby Lock Sashiko machine. Please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Share this video with a friend if you think that they would love this machine because I bet you that they will. And friends, I'll see you right here real soon. Bye for now.